hello and welcome to african new television news updates reaching you here in lagos nigeria the nation's commercial capital and i'm deborah eze a first stop is in east africa where ethiopian authorities have arbitrarily detained and mistreated thousands of ethnic tigrayans recently deported from saudi arabia according to a report published on wednesday by the ngo human rights watch the findings of the report suggest those in power have resorted to the practice of enforced disappearance Australia, Canada, Denmark, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom and the United States expressed their concern on reports accusing the Ethiopian government of detaining large numbers of Ethiopian citizens based on their ethnicity and without charge. And now in Mali, the West African state envoy traveled to Bamako on Wednesday to deliver a message from the region's leader to Mali's strongman, Colonel Asimi Goita, four days before a high week summit in crisis hit country. Former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan arrived in the Malian capital ahead of a meeting of West African heads of states in Accra on Sunday. They were examining the timetable submitted to them by the Malian authorities following a double push to return power to civilians. The Malian authorities want to make this transition last up to five years from 1st of January 2022. The economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, has so far said that such a delay was unacceptable and will have to decide on Sunday how to report to a timetable that could stretch to the end of 2026. And moving on, the UN Security Council got five new members on Tuesday as Albania, Brazil, Gabon, Ghana and the United Arab Emirates formally took up the post they won in an election in June. Gabon and Ghana each have been on the council three times before the UAE once. Other members are elected by the 193 member general assembly for two years term. They are located by global region. And then in Nigeria, the president's major general Muhammad Buhari retired on Wednesday, restated his opposition to state police, saying it was not an option for addressing insecurity in the country. The president also insisted that the establishment of grazing routes would solve the problem of farmers to headless clashes in the country. Buhari also insisted that grazing routes must be restored across the country to address the gory seasonal farmers' edder clashes. He said that the police were not part of the option his regime would explore to address insecurity. And still in Nigeria, the federal government on Wednesday disclosed that it spent 4.2 trillion naira on debt servicing between January and November 2021. This sum represents 76.2% of the 5.51 trillion naira revenue generated during the period under review. The Minister of Finance, Budgets and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, disclosed this in Abuja during the public presentation of the details of the 2022 appropriation bill signed by President Mohamed Buhari on December 31, 2021. The presentation, which included an overview of the 2021 budget implementation, revealed that oil revenue contributed 970.3 billion naira to the total revenue generated within the period, while non-oil tax contributed 1.6 trillion naira and other revenues amounted to 2.8 trillion naira. And now we head to the foreign scene where Australia and Japan are set to sign a treaty to beef up defense and security cooperation at a virtual summit on Thursday in the latest move to strengthen ties amid China's rising military power and economic clout in the Indo-Pacific region. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison said the two leaders will sign a reciprocal access agreement which will for the first time set out a framework for the two countries' defense forces to cooperate with each other. Australia and Japan also plan to discuss opportunities to strengthen government and business partnerships on clean energy, critical technologies and materials. And still on the foreign scene, Thailand on Thursday raised its COVID-19 alert levels following rising infections driven by the spread of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. The change from level 3 to 4 set a pretext for possible measures that could follow such as closing high-risk areas and placing restrictions on domestic travel or public gatherings. Thailand reported 5,775 new cases on Thursday, a 48% rise on the previous day and nearly doubled the number on January 1st. The Southeast Asian country has vaccinated about 69.1% of an estimated 72 million people living in the country with two doses, but only 10.9% have received booster shots. And now updates from the sports scene. Thomas Tuchel praised the performance 
of Romelu Lukaku in Chelsea's 2 to 0 Carabao Cup semi final first leg win over Tottenham at Stamford Bridge. Lukaku was not among the scorers on his return to the team after being omitted from the squad against Liverpool following his incendiary interview but still impressed the Chelsea boss. The disappointment for Tuchel is that the tie is not over before the second leg has begun, giving Chelsea's dominance after taking a two-goal lead inside 45 minutes. And finally, the federal government has charged the Super Eagles to strike gold in the Afghan Cups of Nation, Afghan, which kicks off in Cameroon on Sunday. The Minister of Sports and Youth Development, Sunday Dare, made the declaration on Tuesday night at the St. Fords for the team held in Abuja. Dari said the Super Eagles have been sent forth as Nigerian ambassadors and worthy representatives to Cameroon. He also urged the players to have self-belief and trust in the coaching crew led by Augustin Guavoen. And that's all we can take on News Update today. Do ensure to follow all our social media platforms on Join Team, Pangram, Instagram and Facebook respectively. Also visit our website on www.africrina.tv and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and remember to always leave a comment on the comment section. Once again, I'm Deborah Eze. Bye for now. <laughs>